I'm Tracy with Legacy Woodworking Machinery, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at Legacy's new Conversational Cam Pro software, or CCAM Pro, with its features and benefits. CCAM Pro allows you to program a complete project instead of just one part at a time. It's designed to take full advantage of Legacy's Woodworking CNC with its three workstations, as well as Legacy's CNC controller. It allows you to convert a simple 2D drawing into a turned part similar to a copy lathe. Currently has 35 toolpaths with more to come. It can import G-code created in Vetric software as well. And it can import and export complete projects. This display table is one of our training projects. This is a perfect example of how to use Conversational Cam Pro. On the CNC system, you have a horizontal workstation, which is used for part processing and sheet processing. For our display table, obviously, we used it to do the rails, the tabletop, and the inlay. The vertical workstation is generally used to machine precision joinery. In this project, we used it to machine the tenons on the rails. The turning workstation is typically used for turning, obviously. These parts can be round or elliptical or multi-sided or odd-shaped. You can carve, rotary carve, or index carve, and a lot more with this system. It's very, very powerful. And on this table, of course, we used it to turn the, the uh, table legs. You notice the legs are tapered with flutes on them. So by using Legacy's adjustable bed, you're able to set up and machine these parts very, very quickly. It's much more powerful than a traditional four-axis CNC. Now let's open up Conversational Cam Pro and take a look at it. The first thing that you notice is that it is project-based, which means that we're going to create an entire project by clicking on this button up here at the top. And I've got a couple of them in here, but if we wanted to create a new one, we would simply click on the new, and you decide if it's going to use the turning center, the vertical table for joinery or the horizontal table for part processing, possibly all three like this. Once you click on save, then you must provide a valid project name. <laughs> That'd be nice. We'll call this the sample project. Okay. And click save. And then we'll select this, this project, the sample project. Now you'll notice that there are three workstations over here and you can create a part for each one of those. For example, we could go into the horizontal table and manage the parts, click a new part, and call this, let's call this the tabletop, or whatever it's gonna be. And you give it a size. I'll make it 14 by 14 by 3 quarters of an inch. And we'll go ahead and save that. There's all the information, we can close. And now under the horizontal workstation, we have a tabletop and you can come in and assign toolpaths. You could do the same thing, the vertical or the turning. For example, if we wanted to turn a leg, we would manage the parts, create a new one and call this the, the leg with a G and no W. And it might be 28 inches long and the thickness might be two and a half inches. And we'd start off with a square blank, so it'd be four sides to begin with. And at that point, We'll close that, and there's your leg for the turning center. Then obviously you can click on any one of these parts and start managing the tool paths. And you'll notice in here that we have just a pile of, of tool paths that you can use for the turning. Okay. So it has 35 different tool paths that are assigned specifically to each one of the workstations. For example, when I'm in the horizontal table and we look at the tabletop, this part, and we manage tool paths, then we can import uh, carvings or other uh, g-code that we've created or we can do all types of three axis mill work in here if we go into the vertical table we'd need to manage a part let's create one here and call this the rail and um, let's give it a we're going to make it 12 by by uh, let's make it four by three quarters of an inch save that okay now when you go into the rail you'll notice that you can manage these tool paths and oh, this is the part, I'm sorry, we have to go into the rail and then manage the tool pass, not the workstation. And you have all types of joinery uh, tool paths already created in here, dovetails, uh, mortise and tenons, uh, 
box joints, figure joints, half blind dovetails, and so on. So you have quite a selection, but each one of these tool paths is dedicated to the workstation that you're working on. So it's not confusing when you get into turning, you're not gonna be cutting dovetails, for example. Now let's go back to the projects here. And here's the display table that we already created. And we'll go ahead and open it up. And you notice that it has all three workstations. Under the horizontal table, we have a tabletop, we have the rail, and we have the arc, the inlay, I'm sorry. So if we take a look, some of these things were created in Aspire. For example, this is the entire project right here with all of the uh, dimensions and everything, and, and this is the leg that we're gonna create. All right? For the tabletop, we're gonna cut this inlay pocket in here, and we might do some edge treatment or whatever we wanna do. And then we're going to also cut the inlay and remove all this material on the outside and glue that in and then surface it off to do the table. And then we're gonna use this profile to cut the, the style on the rail, or the, excuse me, the arc on the rail, whatever you wanna create on here. This could have carving on it, it could have any kind of, of detail you want in here or just cut out the shape. But you can create these codes in here and then go back into Conversational Cam Pro and you can import them. So for example, in the rail, the rail arc, we actually imported the code generated in Aspire and put that into the, uh, into the project, all right? And this is gonna ask us a couple of questions like, uh, all right, in, in Aspire, you used an end mill, a quarter inch. So you need to select one. So we'll go to the end mill. And in this case, we wanna use a down cut, a quarter inch by one inch. And we'll select that and we'll use the bit number one. And that'll generate code to cut that rail, okay? In the inlay, we have imported the inlay carving and so on. In the vertical table, we went to the rail here, we created a tenon. Now this was not imported, this is actually created inside of Conversational Cam Pro. And all you do is answer these questions. And every time you click on one of these fills, uh, it's going to ask you, or it's going to tell you what it's asking for. All tenons must lie in the same x-axis position. The x position must normally be a negative value, and so on. Um, it's asking if you want to, do you want to automatically ca calculate a step over or put your own in? How is, why does the tenon? So it gives you help as you go along. It also has a complete uh, help system up here where you can go into CCAM Pro Help and look at various types of of tool paths that you're creating in here. Let's say, for example, we're doing, um, let's do, let's do a box joint. It doesn't really matter. So this will open up, it's a PDF, and this will go through all of the instructions on how to create your box joints. And some of these even include photos and uh, pictures and examples of exactly what you wanna do. So there's a tremendous amount of help built right into the system. We go down to turning and we look at the leg. Now, all of these tool paths were created um, from here, right within Conversational Cam. We didn't import anything from Aspire. In other words, you can take and use different CAD CAM software, CCAM Pro, Aspire, or, or other programs, generate G code and bring it all into this code. Let's say we wanted to carve on this particular part, maybe on the top square corner outside of the legs. Well, then we could import that carving and it would assemble it into this one G code. So it would cut the square ends, cut the joinery, carve the outside edges, which we imported, and then it would turn and flute and index or whatever we want to do uh, with it. So it assembles the code generated from all programs. Very, very powerful. Then the last thing that you can do is once you've cre created a project and you've opened it, you can come up to file and say, export this project. Okay. And we can put it anywhere that we want. I'll put it in my documents, for example, under CCAM Pro. We won't put it there. Let's put it on the desktop. And we're gonna call this the display table export. And we would save that out. Okay. Then what you do, you can either share that project with someone else you could sell it if you want to sell your designs for other CNC uh, owners. 
um, you can give it to somebody else or whatever you want to do with it. But once they get it or you get one from someone else, someplace else, you go to file and say import project and let's go to the desktop and there is my display table export. You don't need to open or unzip that, just click on it and it's going to put it right into your project. So you'll notice if I go to projects now, there's the display table zero. The next one would be display table one, two, three, four. It indexes them so you can create the same exact name but it'll just distinguish between the two of them. If we open this up, sure enough, we look at the leg, for example, generate the G-code, it's all there. We save that G-code, go to the machine, and start cutting parts. Well, that's it for this brief introduction. We'll get into videos that show a lot more detail on how to use the system. But as you can see, it's simple to use, it's very, very powerful, and unlike any other software, it's used to collect all of the things that you need for one project into one location and generate all the code. It's fantastic. Thank you.